So my first question to you is, uh, what does it feel like to be an empowered woman with a disability? Well, um, I am in a very fortunate position, first of all, to be employed. Um, I am the Secretariat of the South African Disability Alliance, which, which is a wonderful position in the disability sector because I have a huge network and um, we are the, the central point for almost all of the national disability organizations. So it's, it's a privilege to actually be able to, you know, to do something positive and, and um, progressive even, if I can call it that, to, um, you know, in the sector for persons with disabilities, especially because unemployment rates are extremely high for yeah. women in specific. Yeah. Women with a disability. How does technology help with empowering you as a woman with a disability? I think um, for me personally, I'm a, I'm a person of short stature. So you can imagine how uh, going shopping, how difficult that is for me pushing the heavy trolley that I can't see over the handlebars. And also like using ATMs is, is so difficult because even though I can reach the buttons, I can't see what's written on the screen. And that's why universal access and design is so important because if, if they would just design the screen from scratch to be able to tilt, it would you know immediately uh, remove that barrier. But I think... Um, from a, a, a technology perspective, now it's it's easier for me because I can use online, uh, online shopping and do the banking from my phone or from my computer, which really helps. That's where I think Mpini would bring something different because as a blind person, how is technology helping her? Mm. Because sometimes the websites or the mm. online shopping platforms are not accessible. Yeah, you know, our stories are totally different from different dimensions, different perspectives, yeah. um, depending on our different disabilities. So yes, you are right. You have yeah. got um, the aspect of, of uh, people with um, short stature and it is, um, in fact, it is even a, a, a minority in the disability movement, right? It is, yeah. it is a very marginalized group and underrepresented. It's the first yes. time ever South Africa has have a, I established the organization two years ago, just yes. when COVID hit us. So it's been really difficult. Um, mm -hmm. But at least now we've got something and we can influence, uh, you know, policies and legislation and things like that. And what I also have is a wonderful uh, video that actually yes. show, show this woman of short stature and the, the, the barriers that she faced every day. My third question to you, uh, what other aspects in your life have developed you as an empowered woman? What else do you think has really, apart, apart from the technology, what else has empowered you as a Support from family. Um, I think that was most important. And to be accepted in my family as just a normal person in the family, you know, um, Although I were, I'm the only child, my family never treated me any different, you know, than any other body and a, a family member. And that is wonderful. And in, even in my adult life, um, I have two adopted children and they are, uh, you know, average height. And that was such a learning curve for me to see the world through their eyes. Um, mm -hmm. And they are just their mom regardless of my disability you know and wow. that has given me so much strength and yeah beautiful beautiful and thank you for bringing that up really um I, I, and you can tell even uh most people with a disability who are um who are empowered really they they have a lot of support from their families yes and i absolutely I to agree with you yeah. because um those ones that never were never supported by their families never had opportunities because even their families didn't help them like you know to fight for their space or give them the necessary like for example education you know um for me education yeah. is a, an empowering tool uh, absolutely to, yeah to women with i couldn't the agree more i was privileged enough to be able to go to university and many 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 people with 
disabilities just don't have that, especially from rural areas. You know, sure, they sure. um there is no accessible schools and they just miss all the opportunities. So what challenges do you think um are um are being faced uh by women with the the same disability as you? In South Africa, we, we, we face a lot of stigma as well. Besides the accessibility um, perspective um, and the economic challenges that we have, we face a lot of stigma. People of short stature are often regarded as mythical creatures. We are regarded as what they call here yeah, the tokoloshi. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the, the story of the tokoloshi. But um, the Tokoloshi is a mythical creature that comes at night, a small person who comes at night to kill you. It's a, like <laughs> an evil creature. Yes. <laughs> and I can actually tell you it's a folklore, but we are regarded now as this evil little creature um, to the extent <laughs> where we babies with autism are sometimes killed at birth. Um, so, yeah, it's... Um, Stigma and also then, uh, with if I can refer back to employment, when I or a, a short-statured person comes in for an interview, the employer sees this small frame and immediately, subconsciously, they, they merit your capability to your stature. You know, so immediately they think, oh, Sham, you know, what can she do after all? She's so tiny. Mm -hmm. And she might mm -hmm. be, be off work for a long time, you know, or this or that. Or she might break easily. Sometimes they even say, you know, do you break easily because you're so delicate? No, I don't, you know. So um, those are things that's really um, been challenging for us here. Okay, thank you so much. Then my next question to you is, what does equity mean to you, especially in relation to your disability? Having the same opportunities. having Not, not having to fight so hard just to break even with anybody else. Just having the opportunity that anybody else has with the reasonable accommodation provided. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um... A lot, um, a lot of challenges that you have um, highlighted. Do, do do you like think there is a solution, or what is what do you think can be done about those challenges? First of all, a lot of exactly what's going to happen on the eighth, telling our stories, telling our lived experiences to anybody that would have to hear, um, and then also government should come on board more with awareness raising and, and advocacy programs um, to pull it down from national level to community level, because that is where the change needs to happen. Also schools, tertiary education uh, institutions, that that is where the work needs to be. I'm really grateful to you, Melanie, for um, having your time sharing with us. You've really given us a lot of insights We've we've gotten a totally different, you know, dimension of of our stories as women with a disability, and that is why I normally advocate for, you know, inclusion of all yes. people with disabilities with their diversities, whichever whatever it is, because once we bring all of us together, share from one another, we are able to learn from one another.